Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. An enclosure that we're designing. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just, uh, if you had a minute, I would just kind of tell you about kind of what I what I'm working with and then kind of what I'm looking for. Sure. Um, so, so what we are doing, um, we're building like, so it's like a, an enclosure is about 80 inches high, um, about mm, five, four or five feet wide. Um, and it's going to be, it's like all sheet metal enclosure and it, it would be installed like in, uh, gas stations. Um, just like kind of like, uh, it's like under the canopy. It's a non-refrigerated unit. Um, but we are actually copying what would be an existing, an existing unit already. Um, and what they have on there now is like, uh, the already, like, you could purchase, um, the refrigeration doors that go on just like free in the coolers and grocery stores, that kind of thing. Um, those, we've got a couple, uh, samples that I've kind of taken some apart and they, they work off like a, I'm sure you're familiar. Um, it's like a pivot hinge, and then they have like a what they call a torque rod that goes down inside the door frame, and then that allows for like a self-closing feature, it's like a spring spring rod. Um, so I'm in trying to um, apply that to our current door. Um, but what the door is, um, we're doing like an in-house build. Um, we don't necessarily make doors; we make sheet metal parts, but um, I don't know if you're familiar with like 8020, um, the aluminum extrusion stuff, uh, but we're, uh, basically building a, a frame out of the 8020 aluminum and then the glass, a couple of panes of glass that fit inside the frame. Um, and so it's kind of like an untraditional door in the sense that it's more of just like a barrier. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how I can attach this door, um, to like a sheet metal uh, framework, it doesn't necessarily go inside of a jam, uh, like like a like a wood door or whatever. Um, it just kind of it mounts on the front of this frame. And I'm looking for um, a hinge. Uh, I kind of was looking at pivot hinges, uh, maybe like offset or something um, that would also have like a self closed feature, whether it's like spring loaded. But the issue I'm having with some of the the hinge designs I'm seeing is that a lot of times they need to be like mounted like or recessed inside the frame or the floor or in the door itself. So it's kind of looking for like a hinge that just kind of I can just bolt on to the side of the the door frame and bolt on to the the um, the door itself. And then the door is roughly about 80 pounds. And then, so like, I mean, in my head, I'm I'm picturing like two hinges with a spring loaded um, that would be able to handle that. I don't know if you had any suggestions or anything in like a uh, ballpark that would maybe work that I could look at. Well, I mean, if you want to, I am familiar with eighty twenty in the sense that. You know, I, I know what it is. It's an yeah. adaptable piece of aluminum extrusion that you can do lots of fun things with. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, have you explored the types of hinges that just work with 8020? Yeah, I actually do have a pivot um, installed right now. They It is not self-closing, so I would have to have, like, a closer mechanism. Um, we I was originally... I was going to try to avoid a separate closing mechanism. I don't know if I will be able to uh, get away with that, but um, I do have the 8020, their, their version of a pivot. Yeah, so the, um, you know, that may be the most elegant thing to do, just to have a yeah. separate closer, because I can sell you spring hinges. Um, that yeah. you're going to have to just somehow surface mount. Um, yeah. Not, you know, it's going to leave a large gap between because you're surface mounting them. Unless you were to try to somehow, you know, route. I mean, you could route the aluminum, but you don't have anything really to, to attach it to once you do that. 
Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It was trying to avoid the cost of all the, the machining. On, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was just thinking if you, unless you added a, um, a T-slot somehow to the back of the hinge leaf and slid them into the extrusion, um, you know, drill a hole through yeah. the hinge leaf and somehow, you know. Hmm. Um, but it also yeah. depends on the 80-20, you know, size that you're using. It, it You might be able to make that work out. Yeah, okay. So, like, you're talking about, like, almost um, just, like, kind of your standard door hinge. I don't know if that's yeah. right. It's not a great yeah. description. Yeah, but no, that's, that's, that's what a, it is. Okay. So, like, but, like, a spring-loaded version. Um, and then, yeah, I, I did get something. Um, it was, like, a double-acting hinge, but it's essentially the same concept. Um, and I was having trouble with... Uh, how it's mounted. I think these are kind of made for like a, a mortise style or um excuse me, I don't know all the terminology, but um I was having the problem with the actual pivot, uh the hinge, um the spring portion interfering with either the door or the frame. So I think just the configuration of I was trying to get it to a mount kind of ninety degrees, but it kinda of wants to be like uh kind of mounted um, parallel or, I mean, uh, 180 degrees maybe. Uh, but I'd like to look into that because um, I was also yeah. looking at, it was interesting, the uh, the bossard uh, horizontal spring pivots. I like the concept, but I just can't apply it to my door frame without having, like, an extra space because I think those are meant to be inside the door. Essentially, um, so you got a kind horizontal of, spring pivot. A, a, a bossard, B B O S S A R D. I think that's the brand name. Um. Okay, I'm not familiar with anything that they have. Um, oh, okay, I might be saying it wrong. Um. Yeah. You mean bomber guess, by any chance? Bomber, yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that that's, I don't know that a 7800 is going to work in the sense that, uh, well, the 8020 makes this challenging because, yes, you it know, does. there's no way to really attach anything to that stuff. Exactly. Sort of, you know, getting a piece of solid aluminum that's, you know, the proper height that you can then machine. Um and give yourself yeah, something you're, to drill and tap to. Yeah, you're correct. Um, that is a challenge I'm running into. It has made the door uh, easy to build for us, uh, oh, assemble yeah. and everything. Uh, but now my my biggest hang up, I'm I'm really caught up on what hinges to use. Um, so I did discover your uh, YouTube channel and uh, watch a lot of videos. It's really nice. Um, so it's been helpful. Um, and so that's you know how I kind of came across you. I've, See which maybe you thought, um, what you thought. Uh, so yeah, if um, yeah, if the leaf style hinges is kind of like what you you picture, maybe envision in your mind. Maybe I can look more into that. And then like you know, you're saying maybe if you were to go about it, you probably look into a self a self closer mechanism. Well. You know, your door is going to be pretty light, um, and you could use a relatively small um, door closer on that if you were just a surface Yeah. Mount. Oh, yeah, that um, brings up a good question I have, um, actually. So when um, you look at, like, a spring hinge and it's rated, um, let's say, like, oh, th this, this spring hinge is rated to close doors uh, 35 pounds. Does that mean, like, that's – like, if you doubled, if you put two hinges – it could close the door to 70 pounds. No, Does it work that, that way? That rating's always going to be qualified by the quantity of hinges. It might okay. be three, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it's routine to close a 100-pound door with two full-size spring hinges. But what's the, how, how what's, what, what are the two dimensions, the width and um, depth of your 8020? Okay, the overall um, width is 33 inches currently. And um, the height is 68 so uh, what, overall. Just the extrusion itself. Oh, that's an inch and a half square. Inch and a half, okay. Inch and a half square. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. Um Yeah. You you would be able to you would be able to get three and a half inch hinges installed on that, you know, just regular butt hinges and but it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be nice because Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have to be surface mounted and that 8020 yeah. is not going to give you anything really solid to drill and tap to at all. So it's Correct. it's just not not the way to do it. The problem is pivots pivots are nice because um well, I mean it's nice because you can attach something. The problem is the 8020, attaching anything to it whether it be the bottom of the door or the underside of the header um it's it's just nothing to drill and tap to right no i'm totally with you um unless i were to add something to the extrusion um whether it's like tubing or something i can add as an extension to that um i hate to take away from the structural integrity there or it might kind of um set me back a little as far as uh how some of the weight gets distributed if I were to try I, to start adding stuff to it. Um, yeah. yeah, and the, this door swings out in your application? Okay, yeah, so it um, it swings out, um, swings out, and the most I can get out of it is, like, basically just over 90 degrees because they have it, like, recessed about six inches in the outside of the enclosure, um, which could change, possibly, because the design is kind of in flux, but... Um, I can't, I found some hinges like a liftoff hinge that's spring loaded, which would be nice, but I have to have the door open like 180 degrees to be able to drop it down on the pins and then close it. And I just can't get the door open that far unless I would approach it differently where I install a door on a frame first and then I put that inside the, your, their big enclosure, um, which may be what I have to do. I I think what you should do is just get the, you know, the 8020 type liftoff hinges. They're probably inexpensive. Yep. And then I would use a size two door closer that'll have like about a seven inch length on the body. Top jam mount it. You won't see it really at yep. all when the door is closed. Uh, you said it's not refrigerated and, you know. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not refrigerated, design, yeah. Yeah, without changing the design, I think that's a really inexpensive way to do this pretty elegantly. Yes. But uh, you need okay. a header, though, to attach the, the door closer to. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm with you, and I'll work on that. Um, I think that's a huge help because I kind of was going down that route, but I just wanted to hear someone else say it, um, and I just wanted to check to see if anyone else had any uh, great options that I was missing. So, um if it if it wasn't eighty twenty and you could mortise, there are options. You know, you could yeah. use concealed sauce hinges that are spring loaded if you've got the right jam sort of dimension. Um, okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. There's. It, I you know I, I there is potential for um because this is a customer that's going to want these uh, throughout I don't know a couple times a year maybe uh, be a large contract so I might be able to. Uh, redesign things as we go along. So, um, but for for now, I'm working with this. Um, so I think you've given giving given me some good advice. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in your drawing, though, you're uh, yeah, you're drawing. You're gonna miter the miter the outside corners of your door. That's what you're gonna do. Um, no, we just have them overlapping right now. Okay. I think if you miter them, you should be able to just, well, if, if you just butt them end to end, there you go. But the miter will probably prove stronger overall if you get the right connectors to attach those to because of the surface area that you're increasing. Plus, its ability to stay square will be increased as well. Oh, well. But, yeah, whatever. Okay, interesting. Yeah, actually, they're going to do the machining for us, um, so it just kind of added to the cost. But uh, ah. I might look, I might look into that. Um, so that's that's good. Um, so for like a closer, um, I'm just wondering if I had any questions before I let you go. But uh, so if it's an 80 pound door, what would you? Uh, 
uh, recommend for just a uh, close. I know you mentioned the dam jam mounted, but um, what kind of weight rating should I look for? Well, surface closers are going to handle, depending on the spring power, doors up to about 225 pounds. So, okay. what you know, because if you're going to top jam mount it, I would I would probably in your first mock up. I would use a size two closer just to see if it works, just to see if it closes. And if it yep. doesn't, then you go to a adjustable spring. The downside of it, the upside is that you can control the pre-compression on the spring, the, uh, which basically means you can at account for a heavier sure. door. Number two, the pardon me, the downside of it, though, is that you, the body gets longer. You're going to be about nine and three quarter length on the body. Okay, yes, okay. Okay, I'll count for that. Um, okay. Yeah, that helps a lot. I'll look into that. And, um, yeah, I'll, uh, possibly be in touch, uh, as we move on. Um, and things might change. So, um, yeah, thanks for your input. Please let me know how it turns out. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks again. Sure. Bye bye. 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 Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.